Hi everyone, this is now the second video in simplifying radicals. What we'll be using to simplify radicals are the different laws of radicals presented in our lesson. In the previous video, we were able to simplify the radicals using the concept of radicals as a result when we transform an expression with fractional exponent or vice versa. So we used the concept of uh, fractional exponents to simplify radicals better. In this video, we might be using the same processes, but there are some inclusions or additional concerns in the items to be presented here. So let me share to you right now the material for practice exercise B of the same lesson. So we have six items here. I am hoping that the spaces I have added here will be enough. But if it's not, we will add space later on. So in number one, you have here the expression square root of 20. Okay. In your grade seven years, you were actually able to or start learning how to estimate irrational numbers. When we estimate, uh, we, we estimate irrational numbers for items that cannot be simplified into a rational number, such as square root of 20. Because 20 is not a perfect square number, therefore, there is no rational number that can represent this value. But for this grade level, we are not going to estimate rational numbers. Rather, we are just going to express this in a better form, in a simplified form, which will be very uh, useful in dealing with operations later on. So how do we simplify this? We are going to use here the, the second law of radicals, which is the multiplication law. The multiplication law of radicals tells us that the radicand here may be written as a factors of two different numbers or even three different numbers if you want. So we could actually rewrite here square root of 20 as a square root of a product of two factors. But mind you, let us not just use any factor. You may say 10 times two, right? You may say here 10 times two, but it will not help us because 10 and two are still not perfect square, fact per perfect square factors. And why do we take perfect square factors? because the index here is two, meaning the radical symbol is a square root. So we are going to look for perfect square factors. So the other factor, the other uh, two factors that can represent 20 is the number four and five. Four times five is 20, and what one of these two, which is four, is a perfect square number. So since we already have a perfect square number, Multiplication law tells us that we could actually share the square root to both of the factors, square root of four and square root of five. Okay. And then square root of four is a rational number, and therefore we can simplify it better. This becomes two, and square root of five, since five is not a, per a perfect square, it will remain as it is. And since earlier, the operation separating four factors four and five is multiplication, the, se the operation rep separating the integer two here and the rational number five is also multiplication. But don't you don't need to place here parentheses anymore because that automatically means multiplication. Nor place here times because we don't use anymore x as multiplication because it may mean a variable later on. So that is the answer for number one. We simply sim uh, look for a perfect square factor of 20 and then later on simplify it. In number two, we already have a uh, integer 50 and a variable x cubed. So let me copy it here. Square root of 50 x cubed. So similar in number one, we are going to look for a perfect square factor of 50. So we could rewrite this as, okay, you could rewrite 50 as 25 times two, okay? Because 25 is a perfect square. Do not use five and 10 because five nor 10 is not a perfect square. So you are just going to uh, return to the original value. 
But take that we have here a, a um, variable. So we could also express x cubed as a product of two numbers where in one of, not numbers, product of two expression where in one of the expression is a perfect square. So x cubed can be rewritten as x squared times x. Pardon me if I'm going to uh, show here the step-by-step -step processes. For some of you who could actually immediately grasp the situation, you may proceed in your own method, but I'm going to present here the step-by-step -step process. So we have here four different factors, 25, 2, x squared, and x. And then multiplication law tells us that we can set break or not break. We are going to share the square root or the radical sign to all okay not just earlier number one we have only two factors here we have four and then simplify them one by one this one square root of 25 is five you have square root of two take note that we already talked about simplifying uh, radical expressions use with variables in the previous lesson so this could be rewritten i'm going to write it here this could be written as x to the power of two over two that's one in short the answer here is x and since this is not the perfect square it retained as it is okay so already simplified two of the four fa factors which are already perfect squares now the final answer is just to simply rearrange them take note that the multi the process separating all of them is multiplication so we could simply pair this with this so you have here the expression 5x and square root of 2 and square root of x. And then let's use the reverse operation of the multiplication law, combine them into one radical. So this is actually equal to 5x square root of 2x. So that is the final answer for number 2. Again, this is just a step-by-step -step process. For some of you, you could immediately grasp the situation wherein uh, remove x squared and leave x here. That's fine with me. Number three. Number three is now represented as cube root of 81. So we go back to an example with no variable. But 81 is a perfect square of 9, but not a perfect cube. However, we could write 81 as the cube root of two numbers of which one is a perfect cube. That is 27 times 3. Because 27 is 3 to the cube. Multiplication law tells us that we can separate the two. But by means separating, the indices are just the same. So you just simply share. It doesn't mean that this becomes 10, that becomes 2 or 1 or 0. Okay? And the cube root of 27 is 3. This is not anymore simply, uh, simplifiable. So that's 3 cube root of 3. So don't be disturbed with plenty of 3s here. This is an uh, integer. This is index. And this is radical. Number 4. Number 4, same with number 2, is a combination of a variable and a numerical coefficient. But now we have under cube root negative 32 y to the power of 5. Okay? So we could again break this because negative 32 isn't a perfect cube, but we have a factor here which is a, is a perfect cube that's negative 8. So you have here cube root of negative 8 times 4. And we will look for a uh, exponent of the variable which can be simplified. So again, same as what we did before in, pre in video number in the first video, we actually we can actually look for a, a exponent here that can be simplified by three. That's actually y cubed because that's three over three. That's one, and we leave here y squared. And then we proceed with multiplication law. That's cube root of negative eight cube root that's again okay, sorry that's cube root of four cube root of y cube and cube root of y squared 
And then we have cube root of negative 8, which is negative 2. This remains because 4 is a perfect square, not a perfect cube. This becomes y. And you have cube root of y squared. As to why it becomes y, or as to why it becomes y, take note that this could be rewritten as a uh, expression with fractional exponent, y to the power of 3 over 3, which is y to the power of 1. And then, same with number number 2, we rearrange negative 2y, cube root of 4, and then cube root of y squared. And combine the remaining. So you have here negative 2y. We can combine them using the reverse operation of the multiplication law. Cube root of 4y squared. This is the answer for number 4. Number 5 and number 6 talks about the division law of radicals. A division law of radicals tells us that if we have a square root of x over y, we can just simply share, just like what happened here, share to both numerator and denominator, and then therefore we have uh, square root of x over square root of y. Or we could actually do it reverse, reverse the operation. So in number five, right, we have here, for a while, let me extend the space. So that I could, we could have plenty of spaces to scribble. Okay. So for number five, we have here square root of 80. Sorry, that's 80 x to the power of 9 all over square root of 2x. Well, you may opt to say that I could simplify 80, sir, and I could simplify x to the power of 9 because the numerator is just a, I will just use the process of multiplication law. You can do that. It's okay with me. But I would suggest that you could actually use the, the process of division law, wherein you can just simply combine them into one. And you have here, uh, sorry, that's, this is x, this is x for a while. Let me go back to the given. Yeah, this is x. Yeah. So we, we could actually combine them into one radical, radical expression, I mean, x to the power of 8 over 2x. And then we simply use the loss of exponents inside the radical symbol. 80 divided by 2 is 40. x to the power of 9 divided by x is x to the power of 8. So again, you may opt to simplify first the numerator before you apply the division law. No problem. That's okay with me. But you could also do this one to make it easier. And then instead of division law, we will have multiplication law. So 40 is actually 4 times 10. And we could just leave x to the power of 8 as it is because it can actually be simplified later. So this is further equal to square root of 4, square root of 10, and square root of x to the power of 8, which is equal to 2 square root of 10. And this, yeah, again, you can transform it into the fraction exponent 8 divided by 2. So you have the answer x to the power of 4. Final answer, just to arrange it properly, you have 2 x to the power of 4, square root of 10. This is the answer for number five. Number six, last item for practice exercise B. We have cube root of 72, a to the power of six, b squared all over cube root of three, a, b. That's b. And then we can combine them into one expression. That's cube root of 72, a to the power of 6, b squared all over 3ab. And simply apply the loss of exponents. Cube root 72 divided by 3 is um, 24. Correct me if I'm wrong. That's 24. And then 
a to the power of 6 over a is a to the power of 5. And b squared over b is actually b. Okay? So again, you may again opt to, to simplify this first, sir, because it's easier for me. Before we combine, it's okay. But for me, I will just combine first before to simplify because uh, we have uh, we can make it into one. It's easier to make it into one than separate items. So we have here to simplify. Okay. Let me put some divisions. So you have here. 24 can be uh, written as 8 times 3. 8 to the power of 5. So uh, as a factor, which is a perfect cube. So it, this is a, sorry, a cube times a squared. And then b has no more factors. It stays as, as it is. So to simplify better, cube root of 8 is 2. Okay, I'm jumping one step. Okay, cube root of 8 is 2. So cube root of 3 is still cube root of 3. Cube root of a cube is a. Uh, let, let us not jump one step. So that this could be, uh, what do you call that? Comprehensive. So let us have here cube root of 8, cube root of 3. Again, pardon me if I'm going to do it step by step. Either way. For some of you who already grasped the process, this is just okay. This I'm doing this for those who are still struggling. So cube root of 8 becomes 2. Cube root of 3 is just cube root of 3. Cube root of a cube is a. And then you still have cube root of a squared. This cube root. That's cube root. And then cube root of b. So let us rearrange and combine those which can which are were not simplified. So we have here the answer to a and then cube root of 3a squared b. Okay. So these are the answers for the practice exercise b involving the multiplication and division laws. So you have here number one, two square root of five, number two. Uh, 5x square root of 2x. Number 3, 3, uh, that's uh, many 3, so don't worry. Number 3 is 3 cube root of 3. Number 4 is negative 2y cube root of 4y squared. Number 5 is 2x to the power of 4 square root of 10. And number 6, you have 2a cube root of 3a squared b. There is one question that we need to address, okay? Why do we need to simplify radicals? Okay. The purpose of simplifying radicals will be captured later on in operations of radicals, specifically for addition and subtraction. We can only add or subtract radicals with the same radicand. Okay? Just like the concept of adding fractions, we can, we can add with ease the similar fractions. In radicals, we can add with ease those radical expressions with the same radicand. So how do we know if they have the same radicand? We need to simplify them. And if we can simplify it better okay, and look for the similar radicand, that those are the items that we can add or subtract. But if by simplifying, at the end of the process of simplifying, the radicals are still not the same, we'll talk about it on the operations of radicals. Be excited. Use this video as you simplify more examples. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your viewing. Goodbye.